Tonight on CTV News at 5. And all of a sudden, I have all this <laughs> hoop on. She's Joy by name and a joy to be around. Meet the 101-year-old firecracker on a mission to make the world a little better place. And trust us, you'll enjoy visiting Joy's world tonight. Live from the Maritimes News Center, this is CTV News at 5 with Maria Panapalis and Jason Baxter. Don't miss that story. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to CTV News at 5. I'm Maria Penopalis. And I'm Jason Baxter. Thanks for joining us. It's been a difficult time for most businesses navigating the COVID-19 pandemic. But for some, it actually means business is busier than usual as they deal with increased demand. We'll explain in just a moment. Also tonight, a not-so-secret family recipe. Singer Carl Wolf makes music and meals in his downtime these days. Carl puts his kitchen skills on display in our second half hour. First at five tonight, though, business boom. While the pandemic and physical distancing doesn't have us out and about or shopping quite like we're used to, the demand for certain products and services is higher now than ever. As CTV's Laura Brown shows us, some businesses experienced a surge in sales just trying to keep up with customers amid COVID-19. It's a real life puzzle and plexiglass is the puzzle piece. Okay. Demand for the acrylic sheets has shot up as businesses look for ways to reopen in the safest way possible. It's been 12 to 14 hour days. I, I know my wife said to me, she said you've been gone 34 or 37 hours there a couple of weeks ago. When this pandemic first started though, Scott Williams had a puzzle of his own. The CEO of Taylor Printing Group wanted to keep his employees paid and working. First we started with face shields and now as you can see we're doing some uh, physical distancing dividers. So the business pivoted a bit to accommodate business needs from hair salons to restaurants to office spaces. You know, people have been through a lot and we're going to still go through a lot. You know, the economy's going to struggle and if we can help out a little bit, then we're happy to do so. This Dairy Queen location opened its drive through last week. The next step, once these safety measures are in place, will allow customers inside for takeout only. That is the easiest way we have to service as many people as we can so um, the customers have been very patient and we're very thankful for that. Scott's Nursery has a drive through of a different kind. To keep their staff and customers safe, the garden center is doing curbside pickup. While it's more work, they're also finding more people have picked up the hobby. It's hard to explain things, you know, when you can't like show them anything. So we're trying to do all that over the phone with them as best we can. But it's, yeah, it's funny how many people are getting into vegetable gardening, which is great. Finding a way to fit in this new normal. We acquired a company in Halifax just before Christmas, Bounty Print, and they've been flat out as well. And we can tell them what's coming now as Nova Scotia looks to go into their first phase of uh, reopening. And you can certainly add ice cream to the list of commodities in high demand these days. Laura Brown, CTV News, Fredericton. Thank you, Laura. Some good news. Yeah, it's good to see some businesses benefiting. Right now, let's check in with Steve Murphy for a look at what's coming up at 6, Steve. All right, Jay and Maria, thank you. On CTV News at 6 tonight, health officials in Nova Scotia have not provided a clear timeline for reopening things. But today they say two weeks without cases of COVID-19 would be the minimum before getting the all clear. CTV's Natasha Pace speaking tonight with a child care provider about her plans to open. Also questions for Premier Stephen McNeil tonight. And we are hearing from a celebrated Nova Scotia musician who says the lack of high-speed internet is making the pandemic all the worse for him. Many artists have been performing online since cancellation of their concerts and other events. J.P. Cormier says he can't. He's at a definite disadvantage. He's disconnected. The story here at six. And, uh, browsing and Halifax Regional Council has a tough task ahead of it. They need to find millions of dollars in cuts because of loss of revenues from COVID-19. And the chief administrative officer is warning that next year's finances will be even worse. Coverage at six o'clock. Right now, back to the CTV Weather Center with meteorologist Kaylin Mitchell. We seem to be changing seasons daily. It was summer yesterday. I'm not sure what it is today. 
Yeah, a little, little combination of uh, winter and spring today in parts of the Maritimes. We'll, we'll say that. A lot of areas seeing some rain drizzle and fog. Occasional breaks in the cloud cover, actually, where the sun broke through a little bit. Uh, temperatures did warm up and fairly quickly. You can actually see we did reach some double-digit temperatures in the first part of this evening around parts of the Atlantic coastline of Nova Scotia. Now, where it was chillier was up around the northwestern corner of New Brunswick, and that is where they saw some snow falling for today. There's still some snow falling at this hour. Other parts of the region are actually going to see what's left of the showers turn over to some flurries as temperatures fall through the night. Winds a little bit variable in direction as we do have a low pressure system moving through, but they're being mostly sustained between 15 and 30 kilometers per hour heading into the first part of the evening, though with a few gusts being reported between 30 and 50 kilometers per hour. On satellite and radar, so remaining rain and showers, and there was actually a rumble of thunder with these showers in through central parts of Nova Scotia, showing up here in through the greens. However, in through the blues up around the northwestern corner of New Brunswick, that is that snow that I mentioned, still a potential that there could be some totals of around 5 to 10 centimeters in some of the higher elevation. Uh, there is a clearing trend in the forecast, though, and we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Steve. All right, thank you, Kayla. The first forecast with Kayla Mitchell coming up here on CTV News at 5 o'clock with an update on CTV News at 6, including the seven-day forecast right into the middle part of this month. Tighter border restrictions in New Brunswick are causing some confusion and in some cases quarantine for residents who've left and are now have tr having trouble rather getting back in. CTV's Jonathan McGinnis at the border with more for us here on CTV News at 6 o'clock. Right after more here in the 5 o'clock hour, which continues with Jason and Maria. Thank you very much, Steve. But listen, don't you go anywhere. Birthday, Nancy, and Thanks. Uh, happy afternoon, everyone. We're with you from Orlando, Florida. It's 95 in the sunshine here. We are here. This Who's that young man? It's Steve's amazing 40th anniversary with ATV CTV today, and we'll look back at some of the highlights when we return and get Steve's reaction just a little later in the show. Stay with us. We have some people who are very, very concerned. Did you know Castel 1010710 offers great international rates? Available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. No need to switch telephone providers. Your calls will be printed on your local phone bill. No contracts, no monthly charges, and no network fees. Check our website at 101010.com to see all our international rates. Or call us toll free at 1010710.00. 1010710 from Castel, the solution for your international calls. So I'm reading my daughter a bedtime story and she says, Daddy, take the roof off. I want to sleep under the stars. It's this perfect moment, and I'm sweating buckets thinking, how can I pull this off? How much is a skylight? And permits? I can barely dad, let alone lift a hammer. I had no idea how I'd afford it, but I knew someone who did. You and your daughter's big ideas first. Banking second. Canada's credit unions. you say it, wishing someone good night brings us all a little closer. Sleep well, stay well. People living with serious disability are sometimes wrongfully denied Canada Pension Plan disability benefits. And insurance companies sometimes suddenly and unjustly terminate LTD benefits. Having that monthly payment withdrawn can be very stressful. Perhaps this is happening to you. At McGilvery Law, we help people who have had legitimate claims denied or terminated, and we don't charge fees unless we secure a favorable ruling. Get the experience of McGilvery Law working for you. Experts. And now we're available online or by phone to match you to a better sleep. Connect with us today at sleepcountry.ca. Sleep well, stay well. This segment brought to you by Sunshine Renewable Energy. Together, our community is stronger. 
Welcome back. Monday, May 12, 1980. Queen Elizabeth was the British monarch and Trudeau was Prime Minister, but it was Pierre, not Justin. The world has changed so much since Steve Murphy's first day at ATV CTV Atlantic. Here is a look back at some of the many highlights in a remarkable career. And the forecast is for sunshine, some cloudy periods and a high of 16 today. Cloudy tonight, the low near 10. Tomorrow clouds again, the high 18. 11 degrees at just after 7.03. And now the ATV Evening News, live at 5. And we are in the heart of the Miramichi in the town of Chatham for the fourth annual edition of Canada's Irish Festival. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, from the World Trade and Convention Center in Halifax, the 21st Christmas Daddies. Steve Murphy at the auction desk, and the bids are coming in faster than we can keep up with them. All kinds of people, uh, a thousand, perhaps 1,500 people, are lining the streets. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your support. There he is, the leader of the Liberal Party, the Premier of New Brunswick, Premier-elect Frank McKenna. It is old home week. A lot of racing is going on here. It's just like stepping into history. History as it might have been 125 years ago in Sherbrooke Village, Nova Scotia. Hello everyone and welcome to Party Beach. But he just barely made it into the station. Howie, you're kind of looking thrown together tonight. Is my is my microphone wire showing? <laughs> yes, it is. The guy wanted to hide it. Is it showing? Uh, yes, among other things. Here I am in Newfoundland. This is amazing. The technology that they have in the 90s that I can be here in Newfoundland and talk to you wherever you are. Now, I'm surprised you're somebody from Southern California where it's probably about 75 degrees, even right now, singing the praises of our nice, cool climate here. It's great. It's beautiful. We're going to have to get you working for tourism or something. Hey, fresh air. Our very beautiful nation's capital that the whole world is seeing through the eyes of the media here to cover the visit of Soviet President Mikhail Gorbachev. A uh, happy afternoon, everyone. We're with you from Orlando, Florida. It's 95 in the sunshine here. Lots of Maritimers are here. Do you think that daytime television is in any way as neurotic as this? Or even a little bit neurotic? I think life is as neurotic as this. We sort of, you know, it, it's a parody on all of that, but life is extremely complicated and neurotic. And as much as you think you're not one of them, uh, yes, you are. <laughs> And literally hundreds of thousands of Montrealers and Quebecers are here on the streets. We're on Sherbrooke Street at Chambly. They're all throughout the city for a great celebration of Quebec nationalism. Life is much more interesting to me. Do you, like being, do you like being interviewed? Oh, I think it's fun. You know what it is? Interviewing for me, being interviewed for me is therapy. This is the ATV Evening News, live at 5. Good evening from Pictou County, Nova Scotia, where almost 84 hours after a devastating explosion, the search continues for 15 miners missing in the West Ray Mine. Good evening, Steve Murphy, live at Argyle and George, just at the head of the staircase that leads into historic Grand Parade, which is, as we said yesterday, for the next 48 hours anyway, the virtual center of the industrialized world. Good evening from the ATV News Center. I'm Steve Murphy here with a team of more than 100 ATV journalists, researchers, reporters, photographers, ready to bring you the story of the 1995 provincial election. Steve Murphy, Steve Weagle. This is the ATV Evening News. There is Her Majesty the Queen with a final few words for Speaker Paul McEwen, Speaker of the Legislature, as she and His Royal Highness depart historic province house. Now, for the very first time, Prince Edward Island and New Brunswick are linked by the bridge across Northumberland Strait, and traffic has been flowing across Confederation Bridge now for the past uh, about 45 minutes or so. The initial shock and disbelief about the death of the Princess of Wales on the weekend has now largely given way to grief. Witness the uh, throngs of people who have come to Buckingham Palace. As the uh, search effort continues around the famous lighthouse at the Cove, which tragically has become a, a beacon of a great disaster here overnight. Now, in the wake of the attack in the United States, North American airspace is completely closed. All of the airports in Canada, all of the flights in Canada and the United States canceled. Many hundreds of flights have been diverted away from the United States and into our airports here in the Maritime Provinces. And a local state of emergency in Halifax remains in effect this morning. All of the schools are closed in the Halifax Regional Municipality, in Nova Scotia's Colchester County, Cumberland County, East Hants, 
and Pictou County. And then with the very strong winds, the trees began to fall down, the power went out, and the telephone service has also been interrupted in much of mainland Nova Scotia and Prince Edward Island. Meteorologists call this a weather bomb, and it has exploded with full force over the Maritimes today, sparking a ferocious blizzard and states of emergency in both Nova Scotia and Prince Edward Island. Good evening from Camp Gagetown, New Brunswick, the very center of a nation that is feeling extreme and extraordinary grief tonight following the loss of six Canadian soldiers in Afghanistan on the weekend. Nowhere is the loss more deeply felt than here at Gagetown and here in the Maritime provinces. How do you and how does the administration assess the safety threat in this country, on this side of the border? Well, I think there's no doubt that we are safer. We have better information sharing. We have more secure borders. We know in some ways what to look for. And we're very pleased to have Sir Paul McCartney joining us tonight from Charlottetown. Sir Paul, welcome. Good to have you. Thank you very much. Nice to be here. Have you been in this part of the country before? I have not, no, but it's very beautiful and I, I love it. If, you know, if the balloon popped tomorrow, um, I would certainly wouldn't have any regrets or have any excuses to have any regrets. It is very kind of you to give us a few minutes of your day today. We appreciate your time very much. Thank you. Lovely Richard Branson. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks very much. What is of greatest concern to you? What would be the issue that might keep you awake at night? Well, the, the one issue that I'm absolutely focused on and have for, uh, for a few years now is growing the economy in a way that uh, gives everyone opportunities. Good evening and welcome to our special coverage of this election day in the United States of America. We are here in the historic Hall of Flags at the state capital of Augusta, Maine. Do you regret saying that it's not necessary for a premier to ever break a promise? What I, what I said to you, Steve, is you go through this structure and I'm hoping to continue to be the premier, to continue to make sure that we have access to uh, primary health care for every Nova Scotia. Well, would you say that again tonight, that it's never necessary for a premier to break a promise? Good evening, everyone. The storm has actually strengthened on approach to Nova Scotia this afternoon. Sustained winds now of more than 155 kilometers per hour. For my colleagues on both sides of our cameras, I'm Steve Murphy. Thank you for being here. We're back tomorrow afternoon at 5 o'clock. Have a good evening and be well. I really enjoyed watching oh, that. Same. And it's abundantly clear to me that, Steve Murphy, you have held our hand through every major event in the Maritimes over the past 40 years. For 40 years now. Yes. Absolutely. And it's we can see Steve just off camera seeing this for the first time. We're going to get his reaction coming up in just a little bit, so stay with us for sure. We love you, Murph. Congratulations. And he's not going anywhere. This is just a celebration, everybody. We're celebrating 40 years of Steve Murphy on CTV. All right, coming up next, some familiar faces check in on Murphy's Milestone. Hey Steve, I'm on my balcony here in Sydney and you know what it is? It's quite different from sitting with you because when I'm with you, it's the hot seat. Happy anniversary and keep on rocking. Hey Steve, I just wanted to add my voice to the many. And I was standing in the, in the television newsroom and Dave... Hello Steve. I'm... Daryl's family uses Gain Flings now, so their laundry smells more amazing than ever. Isn't that the dog's towel? Oh. Hey. Me towel, suit towel. More gain scent plus oxy boost and Febreze in every gain flame. 23, 24, 25. What you doing, baby? The insurance company wants to know how many feet to the nearest fire hydrant for a quote. Ain't that a drag? Total drag. 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. The world has changed, and finally, insurance has too. With Sonnet Insurance, you just answer a few easy questions, and our advanced analytics does the rest. No confusion, no guesswork. We just insured our home. And I'm not even confused. Sonnet Insurance. Get insured online today. I'm leaving you. The signs were there. We just didn't want to see them. I wish it didn't have to be this way. It doesn't. Rogaine, scientifically proven to keep your hair from breaking up with you. Life, like work, is always in progress. You'll never really run out of things to do. It means you'll always have something new to learn. You might even discover something better. Sure, it can be hard, but you gotta be tough, like your Kubota. Because as long as you power through, you'll keep on moving forward. Kubota. For Earth. For life. I think a great legacy will be to bring my grandchildren here. 
There's something awfully nice about just coming to a place where you can walk and, uh, and slow down. I will do that next summer. They're all going to come here. They're going to see it. They're going to experience it. And I want them to bring their children. To learn more about how you can help, visit naturestories.ca. In Atlantic Canada, we take great pride in our history of resilience, kindness, and community. To all the silent heroes, ensuring we have care, food, and protection, our team at Wagner's would like to extend a sincere thank you for upholding these values at a time when they're needed more than ever. Stay strong. Stay safe. Please stay home. You got a second chance. Just think about how you're going to use it. You ready? Get into an all new transplant Wednesday, 10 8 Mountain, only on CTV. Well, I've been here for, uh, well, I guess 21 years now, and it may be the first time I've seen Steve Murphy close to a loss for words. Completely. Yeah. I don't know where Leo Carter found all that tape. I thought we'd burned most of that. We probably should have burned some of it. We're not done yet, by the oh, way. Oh, boy. Okay. COVID-19, of course, forces people to change the way they celebrate, including us. We'd normally gather together to mark a milestone as big as 40 years with the company. But since we can't, Steve, here's some well wishes from near and far. Steve, your National Newsroom family is sending congratulations and gratitude to you on this 40th anniversary at CTV. A steady hand has been your hallmark, delivering news that is not always easy to hear, but always with integrity and respect for the community. We know that so much has changed in our business over these 40 years, but your presence and approach has been a consistent source of truth and sincerity. From all of us, Happy anniversary, Steve, and thank you for setting the bar so high. We love you. Hi, Steve. 40 years. Everyone deserves to be paroled at some point along the way. Congratulations, though. What a privilege it has been for you uh, to communicate to Atlantic Canadians for 40 years on some of the highs and lows uh, that have happened in all of our lives. And what a privilege it has been for us uh, to have your steady voice in hand uh, to help guide us through uh, those events. Even though you and I may not always agree on some of the issues of the day, I respect the fairness that you bring to your job and the way you communicate it to Nova Scotians. Wishing you much success into the future. I look forward to seeing you soon. Congratulations, Steve. I understand this is your 40th anniversary with CTV ATV. It's been a it's been a distinguished career thus far, and I'm sure it'll continue to be one. You know, I've always been very impressed with your level of knowledge on any subject. Your your questions are probing, and you won't accept uh, just any answer. And uh, which, because uh, as someone being interviewed, it can certainly be disconcerting. But you know, it's it's what you're doing for the audience that counts. And so I just want to commend you for the excellent service you provided to Atlantic Canada, uh, and that I'm sure you'll. Continue to provide. So uh, great work and looking forward to uh, working with you in the future. 40 years in front of the camera. Wow. Good on you, Steve. My mother always gets a great kick out of the times when you introduce me to your CTV audience as PEI Premier Denny King. She says, Wow, you must be friends. And to that I say, Mom, it's Steve Murphy of CTV. He's a friend to all Maritimers. So on behalf of the people of Prince Edward Island, I say, Happy 40th, Steve. And I wish you many more. You know, when I think about May 12th of 1980, actually, I don't know where I would have been at that time. My gosh, 40 years ago, since you walked into CJCH. It's amazing. Absolutely incredible. Steve, a huge congratulations for being the voice of Eastern Canada, particularly in these times. My gosh. And I just want to congratulate you. You're a legend and an institution out there, man. And we're all very, very proud of you. And to do this with the conviction and integrity that you have for the last 40 years is absolutely spectacular. So much health and happiness and a huge congratulations to you. All the best. Hey, Steve, I'm on my balcony here in Sydney. And you know what it is? It's quite different from sitting with you because when I'm with you, it's the hot seat. Happy anniversary and keep on rocking. Stephen Douglas Murphy, congratulations on four decades with CTV Atlantic. The one thing I will say to be totally 
honest is that you are showing your age. I notice, you know, you're aging, which is funny because I'm clearly not. And that, Steve, is something that you would never indulge in. Fake news. And here's the real deal. From one silver fox to another, happy anniversary, old friend. Steve, I'll never forget that day we first met in 1977. It was a Monday or a Friday. Anyway, congratulations. You are an amazing broadcaster. You have been, for me, both an inspiration and a motivator and a dear, dear friend. Congratulations. Good afternoon, Steve. On behalf of the BC and Bell Canada executive team, I wanted to take a moment and congratulate you on this impressive milestone. And as a fellow Atlantic Canadian, I wanted to say thank you. Thank you for keeping us so well informed these past 40 years. Looking forward to many, many more. Again, Steve, congratulations and thank you. Hey Steve, happy anniversary, 40 years as a broadcaster. That is amazing. You are truly a legend in our community. All the best. Hi Steve, remember me? <laughs> It's Laura Lee. I want to wish you a very, very happy celebration of 40 years uh, as part of the team at CTV. Hey, Steve, I just wanted to add my voice to the many who have been reaching out to you and saying thank you and congratulations on 40 years of broadcasting throughout Atlantic Canada from always bringing us the great stories and the tragedies and telling the truth with integrity and perspective that matters. Well, it was 1979, as I recall, that Dave Wright was moving into television from radio. And uh, they brought a guy in from St. John to do the uh, radio talk show. And I was standing in the, in the television newsroom, and Dave came in with this young fella, and I thought he was a high school student because he looked about 12 years old. Congratulations, buddy. You've done well. You're a great anchor man. Good job, Steve Murphy. Hello, Steve. I'm really pleased to be able to extend congratulations to you on your 40th anniversary with CTV and ATV. We have welcomed you into our homes each and every day to tell us breaking news of the day for the past 40 years. I thank you on behalf of all Nova Scotians for your dedication, your commitment, and your exceptional journalism. Congratulations. Steve, there is so much that I could say, but I'm going to limit myself to two subjects. First, these are extraordinary times, but Steve Murphy is an extraordinary broadcaster. And second, Steve Murphy has a tremendous sense of humor. And boy, do we need that now. Let me just say, Steve, we're all so proud of you. And we are all so glad to be here to celebrate your 40th anniversary. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Well, 40 years is a long, long time. But 40 years of success in the broadcasting business is not only a great period, but a great challenge as well to have overcome. So, Steve, congratulations on your tremendous success. You've become the gold standard and my very best and best health as well to you and your family. When Maritimers settle in to watch their evening news, they want to know what's going on in the world around them. And Steve, you've been someone people can trust to give them the information they need. And that's more important now than ever. So I just wanted to say thank you and congrats on marking your 40th year in journalism. Keep up the great work. Wow. Well, Prime Minister, thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Pretty remarkable. Your oh. reaction? Um, no. Uh, first of all, thank you to all those people for those kind uh, remarks. I guess mostly thank you to the people who watch, the people who listen. We don't have jobs if, if you don't uh, watch and listen as you've done. And all the people you don't see here. I mean, uh, I say this every day, the, the folks on both sides of the cameras, we're all lifted up every day by people who most of you will never ever get to meet. And uh, we, we have nothing to offer without their tremendous uh, skill and talent every day. And I guess the last thing I would say is to my family, to my children and all of those people who are important to me, uh, thank you very much because you know sometimes the work yeah. gets in the way of everything else and it has been that way for so many of us lately but uh, no thank you Jay very much and thank you everybody here 
it's uh, yeah thank you well said as usual Bruce Graham was pretty close. You weren't much older than a kid when you came uh, in here. Well, you know, he mentioned um, our late friend Dave Wright, uh, who uh, mentored me, as did uh, Lloyd Robertson and a couple of others. Um, no, I guess I started young, and I walked into this building, by the way, I said on radio this morning, I walked in through a door over there um, 40 years ago, and look how far I've come. It's about 50 <laughs> feet. But, uh, no, I was a kid walking in here, and I've been fortunate to work for successive leaders and companies that allowed and encouraged uh, young Maritimers to stay here, and you know, a lot of you, yourself included, uh, began a career elsewhere, came back, and I think that's an important reason why we've had some success here. You know, we see it behind the scenes every day. You still have that passion. You still have the fire for it. Where, oh, where does it come from within you? Why do you still enjoy it so much? Well, it's different every day. I, I guess too, after after you've been watching something for a long time, which we do every day in, in the events of the day, you, you just become heavily invested in the narrative, and particularly during times like this when, you know, uh, physical distancing is such an unnatural thing. Mm -hmm. The one thing somebody said to me though is that television is still intimate in a way that almost nothing else is. The internet will never replace it in that sense because although we can't hear you maybe when you're yelling and screaming at us or <laughs> saying what you're saying at home, we know you're there. Yeah. And there is, there's a, there is a physical distance that's overcome by the medium. And maybe that's more valuable than ever, you know? Yeah, it certainly is. Well, it's, uh, it's been a pleasure to be uh, a part of this, and congratulations to you. Thank you. It feels unnatural, speaking of physical distancing, not to shake your oh, hand right now. I was going to say, Jay, when you're five foot seven, you have no idea what six feet is, but I think this is about <laughs> it. So. Mentally, I'd like to shake your hand right now. Well, consider it shaken, and thank you, everybody. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. If you'd like to see an extended version of both the <laughs> greetings and look back. Oh, yeah, by the way, there's more. A look back at Steve's career on our website. Oh. Just go to ctvnewsatlantic.ca. Oh. Maria, thanks. Oh, thank you, guys. And, Mark, you really are the best. It's a pleasure to work with you and to learn from you every day. All right, we've got to take a break here. But there was rain off and on in Moncton today. Here's a look at Victoria Park. The weather kept people away. Kaylin has the full forecast when we return. So I'm reading my daughter a bedtime story and she says, Daddy, take the roof off. I want to sleep under the stars. It's this perfect moment and I'm sweating buckets thinking, how can I pull this off? How much is a skylight? And permits? I can barely dad, let alone lift a hammer. I had no idea how I'd afford it, but I knew someone who did. You and your daughter's big ideas first. Banking second. Canada's credit unions. Work you choose matters. Get on Bell. Get on Canada's best national network. If you've been injured in an accident in Nova Scotia due to no fault of your own, you already have enough to worry about. Let Presler Injury Lawyers stand up to the insurance companies for you. Call 1 800 Justice today. In May of each year, we celebrate National Nursing Week. Though 2020 is the year of the nurse, there's been little time for celebration. Instead, nurses, like so many other frontline workers, are making sacrifices during this global pandemic, as we do our part by staying home. They put themselves and their families at risk as they care for our most vulnerable population. To honor and support our nurses during National Nurses Week, please stay home to help save lives. Chrysler Injury Lawyers are doing their part to slow the spread of COVID-19. Working remotely helps keep clients, staff, and the community safe. We are open, taking on new clients and here to help. Call 1-800-JUSTICE. This segment brought to you by... Chris Brothers, Atlantic Canada's Deli.
The Halifax Public Gardens were under gray skies when this shot was taken earlier today. The sun did eventually break through over the city, and then Kaylin, the rain came back. <laughs> yeah. Kaylin, now with a look that's, at how things are shaping up out there. That's the definition of periods of rain in the forecast. So whenever that shows up, that's what we kind of expect. Sort of some bands of rain with some lulls or breaks in between. Had that today. Let's take a look at some sunrise and sunset times here. But just before we get into more of the forecast, oh boy, it was foggy. The old airport road around the Sydney area. Yes, between some of that rain, uh, some areas saw some sunny breaks. Other areas saw some patchy fog and drizzle. And can't forget that there is still some snow falling around the northwestern corner of New Brunswick. Once again, the higher elevations to get into the hills, mountains, there may end up being some totals between 5 and 10 centimeters. As we move through this evening and tonight, actually the back edge of this weather system as it breaks down to some showers and temperatures fall, we'll be turning over to flurries for other areas of the maritime region. I do want to mention that there is actually a small group of some thunderstorms just drifting through central parts of Nova Scotia. Now, it is sort of headed towards the eastern shore. Not quite sure if it'll be reaching communities on the coastline, but these may be accompanied by a rumble of thunder and uh, the potential for a bit of a heavier downpour or even a little bit of small hail. As we take a look at our weather systems map, it is a weak low that's pro progressing across the maritime region. It's going to be clearing out towards the northeast as we move through tonight. That does mean we have a clearing trend in our forecast over the next 24 hours. So as we move through this evening and tonight, again, what's left of this weather system breaking down to a mixture of showers and flurries. It is possible that there could be some accumulation in those flurries of around a coating into the early morning hours of Wednesday, especially for some central and southern areas of New Brunswick. Now for that part of the Maritimes, those flurries will be coming to an end early tomorrow morning. There may be a few showers flurries across parts of Prince Edward Island through the morning hours on Wednesday. And for Nova Scotia, some of the showers and flurries will linger at least into the early afternoon before they clear away late afternoon and as we move through Wednesday evening and Wednesday night, which is looking fairly clear. And that does mean that we have a lot of sunshine in the forecast for the maritime region on Thursday. Let's talk about some low temperatures. Lows tonight will be a little bit colder in the north, northwestern corner of New Brunswick there between around minus three and zero. Other areas, New Brunswick tonight, lows between zero and two degrees, near two for Prince Edward Island and lows of one to three degrees for most of Nova Scotia. Highs for the forecast for tomorrow across northern areas of New, New, of New Brunswick between five and eight. Fredericton with a high temperature near nine degrees. Same thing goes for St. John and for Moncton and the southeast. For Charlottetown and Prince Edward Island, your high temperatures between 5 and 7 degrees for tomorrow. For Sydney and Cape Breton, highs of around 4 or 5 degrees. Mid single digits for eastern areas of the mainland of Nova Scotia. The north and central parts of the province with highs of around 8 9 degrees. The Annapolis Valley, 7 to 9 degrees and highs of 6 to 8 for communities on the south shore. I'll be back in a few minutes with a five-day forecast. Jason and Maria. Thanks, Kaylin. Feels kind of weird. Feels like we should all be going for a beer right now. I know, it? <laughs> I know. It is. It, it, but it is so nice to be able to give them a little bit of a celebration because it is such a momentous, you know, 40, 40 fabulous years. Yeah, for sure. But there is more show to come. Here's what's still ahead on CTV News at 5. I'm Nick Moore in Lunenburg, Nova Scotia, where a fundraiser is getting plenty of attention thanks to one woman who's on a mission. We're taking a walk with joy coming up. What's going on guys, it's your boy Carl Wolf here and I'm going to teach you today how to make a classic tabbouleh, my mom's recipe, very excited and I'm going to play some music for you, I've got a new single out there, so stay tuned. When you need relief from the toughest allergy symptoms like sneezing, nasal and sinus congestion, and itchy, watery eyes, fight back with Reacting Complete, one fast-acting, long-lasting solution to relieve all your toughest allergy symptoms. Reacting Complete. <laughs> Frustrated that clean clothes you want to wear always seem to need an iron? Next time, try Bounce Wrinkle Guard Dryer Sheets. Just toss it in the dryer to bounce out wrinkles. We dried these shorts with Bounce Wrinkle Guard and a pair without. The Bounce Wrinkle Guard shorts have fewer wrinkles and static and more softness. It's the world's first mega sheet that does the job of three dryer sheets. It also comes in unscented. If you don't love Bounce Wrinkle Guard, we'll give you your money back. Just a small thank you from Tim Hortons. We know you guys have been working long hours. Cheers, Tim! <laughs> Tim Hortons coming through as a good morale boost for our team. 
Tonight's Lotto Max jackpot is an estimated $15 million. Time is running out for your chance to win. Get your ticket now at alc.ca or the Atlantic Lottery mobile app. Supporting our local food and beverage suppliers is more important than ever. There are so many ways for you to buy local. From online ordering and curbside pickup to takeout and delivery. Nova Scotia's restaurants, farmers, fishers, producers, retailers, and more are all working to help you get your hands on local at home. Visit tasteofnovascotia.com to learn how. Transplant, Wednesday, 10-8 Mountain, only on CTV. Welcome back. Time once again to check in with Steve to see what's coming up at 6. All right, thank you, Maria. On CTV News at 6 o'clock tonight, health officials in Nova Scotia have not provided any clear timeline for reopening from COVID-19. Today, though, word that two weeks without any new cases will be the minimum before sounding the all clear. CTV's Natasha Pace speaking with a child care provider about her plans to reopen. And we'll be speaking with Premier Stephen McNeil about why there's no timeline. Also at 6 tonight, we're hearing from a celebrated maritime musician. He says the lack of high-speed internet is making the situation with the pandemic even more difficult. Many artists, of course, have been performing online since their cancelled concerts. But J.P. Cormier says he is at a disadvantage without internet. We'll have the story for you at 6 o'clock. And the Canadian Blood Services is today celebrating the 1,000th donation from this 83-year-old man, Harry Cross. These days, of course, a blood donation is anything but ordinary. The need for blood and blood products is ramping up, and the need for safety in the age of COVID is changing procedures. We'll be looking into that tonight on CTV News, coming up at 6 o'clock. Right now, back to the Weather Center, meteorologist Kaylin Mitchell. Yeah, thank you, Steve, and congratulations again on 40 years with the station. All right, let's take a look at that forecast over the next five days, beginning first with New Brunswick. So tomorrow, there will still be some flurries in some southern areas of the province to start the day. Those clearing away fairly quickly, though, and the afternoon's going to be very sunny. Sunny weather in the forecast for Thursday with high temperatures around the low to mid-teens. And then on Friday, low to mid-teens in the forecast, but cloudier with some scattered showers. After that, Saturday and Sunday looking very nice right now. A mix of sun and cloud at the with a rising trend in temperatures. Looks like we'll be hitting some highs around the mid to high teens. All right, in the forecast for the next five days for Nova Scotia for tomorrow, it is going to be a mix of sun and cloud, but there will also be some scattered showers and flurries. Best chance of seeing the flurries will be in the morning. It'll be mostly sunny on Thursday with high temperatures recovering into the low teens. Low to mid teens on Friday with scattered showers in the forecast. Clearing on Saturday and then Sunday, a mix of sun and cloud with some high temperatures in the mid to high teens. Maybe a little bit cooler on parts of the coast. And for Prince Edward Island, the forecast for tomorrow in the morning, there will be some showers and flurries to clear out of the way. It'll be mostly sunny on Thursday with high temperatures near 10 degrees. On Friday, some increase in cloudiness, maybe a few showers that drift through during the evening and night, but mostly sunny to start the weekend on Saturday and a mix of sun and cloud with high temperatures near 15 degrees on Sunday. Jason and Maria. Thank you, Kaylin. So now we'd like to introduce you to the Maritimers who are marking milestones this evening. We'll get started right here. It is a golden anniversary for Barbara and Calvin Locke of Upper New Cornwall, Nova Scotia. And we thank Mr. Locke for his service. Look at all those medals. Jack and Marion Plume of Cardigan, New Brunswick. They were married 69 years ago. Congratulations. Congratulations. And we're wishing Cora Frazier of Oxford a very happy 101st birthday. Happy birthday, Cora. And congratulations to everyone celebrating tonight to see a milestone again or to find out how to send us one go to ctvnewsatlantic.ca all right time for another break here on ctv news at five but when we return we're cooking with carl wolf three four tomatoes same thing um, then you're gonna have you're gonna add some olive oil very important maybe a spoonful of olive oil the Toronto-based musician has been spending a lot of time in the kitchen during the pandemic. He shares a family recipe next in Keeping Up. 
During this COVID-19 crisis, feelings of depression and anxiety can be overwhelming. Being denied long-term disability benefits in your time of need is inexcusable. Presler Injury Lawyers are here to help. Call 1-800-JUSTICE. If you're spending a bit more time in your garage these days, why not give it a makeover? Upgrade your floor with a strong bond epoxy coating that offers easy care, durability, affordability, and great looks. Strong Bond has all types of epoxy coatings and concrete polishing for residential, commercial, and industrial properties. Financing is available. We cover Atlantic Canada. Visit strongbond.ca for more information or a free quote. What's the secret? The secret, I think, is listening. Uh, to each other and being patient with each other. It's so easy to bring friends in for dinner, afternoon tea, and I don't have to do a thing. <laughs> <laughs> I just have to tell the office that we'll have two guests. It's That's wonderful. Very, very true. It's wonderful. Certainly no regrets. Did you know that Canada's largest pediatric illness camp is right here in Nova Scotia? Brigadoon Village is a place for kids like me who have a health condition or are facing other life challenges. Here, my friends understand what I'm going through, so none of us feel alone. Some campers call it their second home, some call it life-changing. I just call it my favorite place in the world. Find out more about Brigadoon Village, where they're giving extraordinary kids a chance to be ordinary. These are times of financial hardship for many people. Talking with someone knowledgeable about your financial options can be helpful. You may feel you are facing this stress all on your own. During this time, Alan Marshall and Associates continues to work responsibly and safely. We are available to talk by phone or online. Our team of experienced professionals can help you form a plan that works for you. Why not call for a free consultation or visit us online at wecanhelp.ca. If you've been injured in an accident in Nova Scotia due to no fault of your own, you already have enough to worry about. Let Presler Injury Lawyers stand up to the insurance companies for you. Call 1-800-JUSTICE today. Closed captioning of this program is brought to you in part by ExploreNet High Speed Internet. Connect to what matters. This segment brought to you by... Chris Brothers Atlantic Canada's Deli. Uh, that little ad always makes me uh, smile. Time for Keeping Up. Canadian singer Carl Wolf is using his time in isolation to work on his album, which is due out in September. And as Katie Kelly found out, he's also using his time to hone his cooking skills. I bless the rain. Hey, how are you, Katie? I'm good. How are things in isolation? Um, hard, but yeah. I miss my family. I miss my mom's cooking. Well, speaking of cooking, I know one of the things you've been doing to pass the time is take a few cooking classes. Absolutely. In fact, I've been calling my mom on FaceTime and uh, learning some traditional Lebanese, you know, mom home-cooked meals. <laughs> I love that. So you're going to show us one today. Absolutely. I'm going to do a tabbouleh salad for you guys. Okay, first of all, you gotta get a fresh bouquet of parsley and you just chop it really fine. And then what you're gonna do is, is get a white onion or green onion. Same thing, dice everything really, really, okay. really fine. Everything has to be diced really as small as you can, as fine as you can. Tomato, same thing, like three, four tomatoes, same thing. Um, then you're gonna have, you're gonna add some olive oil, very important, maybe a spoonful of olive oil. Um, and then the rest, in terms of like salt and pepper, you just feel it out. Half a lemon, and that's it. You toss everything in. I'm gonna toss this right now. So there you go. Let me taste it quickly. Like that. How does it taste? Oh my god! Incredible. <laughs> so delicious. That's it. Tabbouleh in like 
five minutes. That's amazing. Thank you so much for showing us that. Absolutely, Katie. You got it. All right, let's keep chatting about what else you're up to. So you just released a new single. Tell me about that. The song is called City of Lies, and it's out worldwide on all digital platforms. Shooting the video very, very soon, like in the next couple of days. We're doing a whole e-tour across the country. We're actually announcing a U.S. tour today. So, you know, we're, we're not letting COVID stop us. All right, you've moved locations. It's time for our quarantine. What are you singing for us? Absolutely. Welcome to my studio. This is my home as well. I'm going to sing my new single. It's called City of Lies. It's out everywhere. You ready? Ready. Here we go. You started off from the bottom. And I'm going to leave the Nice to get a shout out there. Thanks, Carl. Yeah, thank you very much, Carl. Coming up next, an ode to joy. And I thought, well, I can walk. So I'll walk 102 times. We guarantee Joy Saunders will make your world a little bit brighter. Meet the 101-year-old who's walking the walk to raise money for the VON when we come back. Right now, as our streets empty, so do Canada's food banks. Subway wants to keep them full, and you can help. $2 from every Subway delivery order will be donated to Food Banks Canada. Together, we can feed Canadians in need. Subway, we're here for you. Did you miss this week's What's for Dinner segment on CTV News at 5? Visit ctvatlantic.ca for a link to the segment and all of the fabulous recipes. What's for Dinner is brought to you by Food and Beverage Atlantic. Gerard was a mechanic for over 25 years. The job is not easy on the body. I just couldn't do it anymore. He had to go on long-term disability. It came to an abrupt end. We just thought, oh my God, what are we going to do? Then I found out about McGillivray Law. They said, okay, we will take the case and fight for you. He was reinstated on his insurance. Thank God for McGillivray. I can't praise them enough. Oxford Learning has launched a new way to learn, Virtual Table. With screen sharing technology, your child can keep the learning going at home with familiar faces and materials. Connect with us today and keep your child's learning on track. Find a great selection of appliances, mattresses and furniture at leons.ca. With amazing deals, experts you can chat with online and available finance options. Plus, get free local delivery right to your doorstep. Shopping online is easier than ever at leons.ca. Institute Atlantic is locally owned and we have an expert team of audiologists and hearing care professionals who are passionate about hearing health care. You can trust our team to provide personalized service, exceptional products, and affordable pricing. These are the signatures that make Hearing Institute Atlantic your best choice. Call us to book your appointment today and let our expert team help you to hear better. At GMC, we're here to help. We're offering 0% financing on some of our most popular 2020 vehicles. Plus, make no payments for 180 days. Ask your dealer for details. 
CTV Tonight. There is no better time than now to get into some great TV. We're here for you with all your CTV faves. It all starts at 7 tonight right here on CTV. Welcome back to CTV News at 5. Tonight's weather watcher is 9-year-old Wyatt Boudreaux Saulnier from Digby County, Nova Scotia. Wyatt has sent us this drawing of himself playing with his sister, Rafaela, on this pirate ship, uh, the Pirate Acadie. Hopefully, you'll have some smooth sailing ahead. Wyatt, thank you so much for the drawing. All right, let's take a look at our forecast for tomorrow. So to start off the day, there is going to be a mixture of some showers and flurries still around the Maritimes. Uh, flurries for southern areas of New Brunswick, mixture of showers and flurries for Prince Edward Island, and a mix of showers and flurries for Nova Scotia. Now moving through the morning hours, the flurries or the showers and flurries will be clearing southern New Brunswick and Prince Edward Island, but they will linger at least into the first part of the afternoon for areas of Nova Scotia, especially around central, northern parts of the province, and off into the east, including Cape Breton, where the best chance of flurries remaining in the afternoon will actually be in the Cape Breton Highlands. Those will continue to clear away, though, as we make our way through the late afternoon hours and Wednesday evening. More clearing expected as we move through the night and into towards Thursday, and Thursday looking very sunny with a nice bounce back in some temperatures. We'll talk more about that and what's coming up for the long weekend in CTV News at 6. Jason and Maria. Thanks, Kaylin. Well, finding ways to give back can bring joy to yourself and others, which is exactly what this story is about in name and action. CTV's Nick Moore introduces us to a centenarian who's won legions of fans for her fundraising and her sense of humor. And all of a sudden, I have all this <laughs> hoopla. Joy Saunders wasn't trying to become a viral hit. In fact, nobody paid much attention to me until I got old. <laughs> now people pay attention because she's raising money and giving people a laugh, too. I mean, you know, at 101, what can you do but laugh? <laughs> I'm in the departure lounge, but the plane never comes in, so I'm waiting. But now she's on a mission, inspired by the story of Captain Tom Moore, a 100-year-old war veteran in the UK who's raised more than $55 million Canadian for his country's health care system by walking 100 lengths of his own garden. And I'm much older than he is. With her cat, Toes, following behind, Joy's been keeping track of how much she's walking in her own neighborhood. I chose a walk, which would be 0.8 kilometers. And if I do that 102 times, I should be able to do it before my 102nd birthday. Joy is raising money for VON Canada, an organization where she's been both an employee and client. I have a great admiration for them. They work hard, they never complain. Longtime friend Nancy Regan posted the video on the Facebook page for The Soul Booth, her podcast. She knew Joy would be a hit. If you do something with a sense of pure purpose and you do it with passion, I believe magic happens. And magic is indeed happening with the online shares and donations adding up. It's been wonderful and experience. And with more walking to do, an experience many are keen to follow. Nick Moore, CTV News, Lunenburg, Nova Scotia. She is spectacular. Special human being, isn't she? 101 and moving. I don't know how old Toes the cat is, right. but was struggling clearly to, to keep, keep up. up. And by the way, in just less than 20 hours, she's already raised $16,000 for the VON, and that number will continue to rise, I am sure. Oh yeah, I certainly hope after this story it'll go up that's some more, that's for sure. All right, let's uh, take our eyes towards tomorrow now and see what Anna and Kaylee are up to. Hey guys, Wednesday on CTV Morning Live, reorganize responsibly. We'll find out how we can declutter our homes despite not being able to donate all those unwanted items. News, weather and more, it's everything you need. CTV Morning Live, Wednesday. Stop. And tomorrow on CTV News at 5, at home with Matt Mays. Katie Kelly keeps up with the Nova Scotia native about his weekly virtual shows and how he's coping during the crisis. No need to go out, just stay in for some mantle music with Matt Mays tomorrow right here on CTV News at 5. And just a reminder, if you'd like to take a look, an extended look back at uh, Steve's 40-year career or the hellos, you can do that on our website as well. It is so entertaining and fun to watch. Thank you so much. Congratulations, Steve. Our news continues Congrats. with Murph right now. All right, Maria and Jay, thanks so much. And now for this Tuesday, May 12th, live and local, this is CTV News at 6. Tonight, the race to reopen, but when will Nova Scotia businesses get the green light?
A COVID curveball. Why the pandemic is bad for the budget at City Hall. COVID under control, but border restrictions leave some New Brunswickers out in the cold. And hooray for Harry. COVID-19 didn't stop him from making a milestone donation. Live from our Maritimes News Center, this is CTV News at 6. Here is Steve Murphy. Hello again, everyone. Leading off tonight with word the search for a missing toddler in Truro, Nova Scotia has now come to an end. Three-year-old Dylan Eller disappeared from his grandmother's backyard a week ago tomorrow. Today, the police say they have met with family members to let them know this is now a missing person case. The recovery effort is over. Dylan was first reported missing on May the 6th, leading to a search on the land and in the water and in the air. Only his rubber boots were found. Anyone with information about the case is asked to call the Truro Police. Area code 902-895-5351. Nova Scotia has just posted its most promising COVID-19 numbers since the initial outbreak. There was no loss of life reported yesterday and just one positive test result. But while the economies in New Brunswick and PEI are slowly reopening, the Premier says Nova Scotia isn't ready to announce a timeline for lifting of restrictions. CTV's Natasha Pace leads our coverage. While well, most businesses shut down by the pandemic have yet to see a firm startup date, larger companies like Tim Hortons, who were able to stay open, have already made their post-pandemic plans. We already have in the restaurant mandatory masks and gloves for our teammates. Um, we're taking the temperature of everyone that's coming in on shift. We have acrylic shields uh, when you're ordering. We have contactless trays that we use to pass you your food. And now as we set up the dining rooms again, we're making sure that the tables are all two meters apart. We're making sure that the tables and chairs are sanitized after every single use. So too have some daycare operators. Jillian Ferris says despite being closed for the last two months, early child care educators have been getting help. So it's only Nova Scotia and PEI that has um, received continuous support from our government, um, which means that we've been able to continue to pay our um, educators their salaries. Um, so that support has been incredible for our sector. It's hoped daycares will reopen by June 8th, but there are still a lot of unknowns. Well, a big concern for us um, is it's impossible to socially distance with children. Um, and as, as educators of young children, we don't necessarily want to, to socially distance from children. Um, so that definitely is a concern for us. Um, I know a lot of us are looking at how we can secure PPE for our staff should we need it. How are we securing supplies? Um, may we have to um, restrict access to our centers, do daily health screenings. While a plan is still under development, reopening will roll out in phases over time. Each phase could last a minimum of 28 days. In addition to opening up more businesses, allowing additional outdoor activities and restarting non-urgent health care services will be near the top of the first phase. I have a meeting coming up in the next few days uh, to start to uh, 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 support them, how they develop their plans to safely return to practice. Uh, one of our priorities is, is dental care. As for Tim Hortons, they say they have the benefit of having restaurants around the world and have been through the reopening stage in Asia. We've been working with every jurisdiction in Canada very, very closely. So operationally, we're ready to go as soon as local governments believe it's safe to reopen those dining rooms. As the province begins the slow process of reopening, Halifax City Hall has acknowledged that the city is looking at making adjustments to crowded areas like narrow sidewalks in order to support physical distancing. Not just sidewalks, but bike lanes and streets as well, in order to comply with public health orders that could stay in place until a vaccine is found. Steve? Thank you, Natasha. CTV's Natasha Pace from Dartmouth tonight. Students in Nova Scotia will soon be able to gather their personal belongings from their schools. With the classroom education over for the year and at-home learning ending on the 5th of June, Medical Officer of Health Dr. Robert Strang says guardians will be able to make appointments to gather up personal belongings left behind when the schools were closed. Beginning the week of May 25th, a single student or family member will be able to access their local school by appointment. Um, uh, staff uh, in, in my office are giving public health advice to the Department of, Ed Early, of Education and Early Childhood Development uh, around this process to ensure that it can be done uh, safely. 
But again, to underscore the point, access to the schools will be by appointment only. New Brunswick is maintaining some of the toughest border restrictions of all the provinces during the pandemic. Tonight, though, we're hearing from a member of the legislature who says the enforcement is inconsistent. He says some are being forced into quarantine after being told they could cross into Nova Scotia for work or even care for a loved one. CTV's Jonathan McInnes has more. The New Brunswick border is monitored closely. Motorists entering the province have their licenses checked, license plate recorded, and they are asked a series of questions related to COVID-19. Even New Brunswickers with permission to regularly leave the province and return are scrutinized. But enforcement of the rules seems to change. Some people who were able to cross the border to help a family member, for example, have had their passes taken away. And in some cases, they've had their passes taken away uh, after they've crossed over and been allowed into Nova Scotia. Issues started to arise when Premier Blaine Higgs announced tighter restrictions at the border. Sackville MLA Megan Mitten says that's leading to confusion and even quarantine for people who try to re-enter New Brunswick. Recent stats show nine people have been turned away at New Brunswick airports, 39 at land borders. These rules um, ha are, are really challenging for the people who are living here. And what's even more challenging is that the rules seem to be changing, or at least the enforcement of them is. People are questioned entering Nova Scotia, too. We are still under state of emergency in the province. But conservation officers on that side of the border do not have the mandate to restrict entry. There are individuals that have come through that... Um, the reason for coming through has been what we would deem probably non-essential. This couple moving to Dartmouth from Ontario just crossed both the New Brunswick and Nova Scotia borders. They say New Brunswick had more in-depth screening. They saw all the documents like uh, if the of official proofs that we have. Otherwise, I think they are not uh, let you pass uh, the border if you are not moving for essential work. Restrictions Mitten supports, but she says there should be consistency for those who have permission to enter Nova Scotia and return. Well, Steve, I'm not sure if you can see it, but the New Brunswick checkpoint is right here behind me. And MLA Megan Mitten says her message to her constituents is to do their homework and make sure they're up to date on the current rules and regulations before they enter Nova Scotia and try to come back through this checkpoint, Steve, to get home. All right, John, thank you. CTV's Jonathan McGinnis there at the Isthmus uh, near the Sackville, Amherst, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick border. Prince Edward Island has no new cases of COVID-19 to report today, and all the cases have been resolved, but there is a border concern on the island. The province has been shut down to outsiders now for weeks, but today there are questions about possible stowaways getting in. Government confirms vehicles are being inspected at the Confederation Bridge if there is a suspicion about what or who is on board. Two investigations are underway at the moment regarding two separate incidents. And in our web poll tonight, we're asking, do you think border restrictions are an effective way to prevent the spread of COVID-19? The options in the poll are yes, travel between the provinces puts people at risk. Or yes, but border controls don't go far enough. Or no, it does make any difference. People will still try to get through. Fourth and finally, no, I'm against anything that interferes with personal freedom. The web poll is available now, ctvnewsatlantic.ca. In the last web poll a few days ago, we asked you how have your grocery shopping habits changed during the pandemic. We've heard from more than 5,000 people, and 27% said they haven't changed at all. They prefer to shop as normal. But more than half tell us they're buying larger orders so they can shop less frequently. 5% say they're buying some groceries online to shop less in store. 5% have switched to online shopping and 8% say somebody else is shopping for me. The council in Halifax is grappling tonight with some of the toughest decisions it's had to make in many, many years. Municipal staff are recommending tens of millions of dollars in cuts because of the economic impact of COVID-19. Although the overall picture is quite gloomy, advocates say they are doing the right thing. CTV's Bruce Frisco with more. We will never return, frankly, to pre-COVID-19 a way of doing business. A cryptic assessment from Halifax's top bureaucrat at a special meeting of the police commission this week, kicking off difficult discussions about how the city is going to spend its money. As we move into the October billing, we don't know how many people are going to be able to pay their taxes. 
it's all COVID, of course. Transit ridership alone is down 80% from what it was, and that's just the beginning. When staff started adding up the projected losses for the year ahead, $44 million simply wasn't there anymore. Add in the other expenses, including borrowed money, and that number nearly doubles. Major capital projects have been shelved for now, and staff are recommending cuts to nearly every department. A million from libraries, more than five million each from both fire and police. But even by not filling vacancies, the chief insists police will be there when they're needed. And we will do everything we can to make sure that um, some things don't get done. But there is, you know, it's self-evident. There is things that, positions that are not filled, there is going to be some work that we can't do. Um, we're not going to let it affect public safety. Your Worship, you mentioned when uh, when you first opened this debate that you wished you could see councillors' faces. Well, uh, my face was that little emoji on uh, uh, our phone with the head blowing up. That's kind of how I was feeling. The debate continued today with councillors looking for ways to minimize the cuts and avoid major job losses down the road. How much would we save if we cut... <laughs> Uh, uh, salaries right across the board by 10%. Would that meet our shortfall? Again, that's a matter of human resources, and I'm not prepared to talk about that in public. You know, these are tough decisions that have to be made. I don't think anybody is feeling joyous or happy about this. Advocates acknowledge none of this is easy, but it's necessary. There are going to be taxpayers that are not going to be able to pay their taxes. There's going to be business owners that are not going to be able to pay their taxes either. Um, and so right now it's prudent for HRM to be um, constraining in any way that they can any sort of costs that are just not necessary. Council will debate the changes again tomorrow and next week if necessary, making difficult decisions in an uncertain economy. Bruce Frisco, CTV News, Halifax. Some doctors and nurses have been told to self-isolate at Cape Breton Regional Hospital in Sydney. It's the second time during this pandemic that the staff there have been sent home as a precaution. As we hear with CTV's Kyle Moore now, it has been a big fear among the frontline workers since the beginning of the pandemic. Much like the weather outside the Cape Breton Regional Hospital today, views on the coronavirus were a bit foggy at first. But when nurses and physicians learned more about the virus, fear set in. The data out of Italy was really quite frightening because they were talking about death rates of 10%. And, you know, and if you catch something, you got one in 10 chance of dying. That's pretty darn bad. That's pretty scary. And so for us frontline workers who were who were looking at that, that, that was a very frightening thing when it was on the way. The eastern zone of Nova Scotia reported a case of COVID-19 over the weekend, the first time in more than 10 days. The Nova Scotia Health Authority says eight staff members at the island's largest hospital have been told to self-isolate as a precaution, which means other nurses and doctors will be forced to cover their ships for at least 14 days. It does create concern for the staff, certainly, but um, by and large, we've been managing very well with that. We've managed managed to find staff to cover uh, when staff have had to go off in isolation. And it's inevitable with a disease like this that there are going to be times where we are going to have staff on isolation. Margaret Frazier says staffing has been a challenge in the critical care areas before COVID-19. Shortages were a worry because both doctors and nurses are valuable commodities in the province. If we had run into a situation where a number of our doctors were, were off sick at once, it would, it would have been a real challenge to us. As staff continue to deal with COVID-19 here at the Cape Breton Regional Hospital, there is fear among the public as well. The ER department has been virtually empty during the pandemic. I have unfortunately seen some patients who have delayed and uh, who have ended up um, being significantly more unwell uh, because they've waited before they've come in. For now, doctors on the island say COVID-19 is manageable and are hoping it stays that way. Kyle Moore, CTV News, Sydney. A person has died in a house fire in North Sydney. Firefighters discovered a dead person inside this home on Mapleview Drive around 6.30 last night. The remains have been transported to the medical examiner's office to confirm the cause of death. The fire marshal's office and Cape Breton Regional Police are investigating. 
A former Fredericton radio host who pleaded guilty earlier this year to a charge of seeking sex from a minor in Puerto Rico has asked that his sentencing hearing be moved to July. Court documents released yesterday show the judge willing to allow Trevor Doyle to appear via video conference for the hearing because of the COVID-19 pandemic. In consultation with his legal counsel, the documents say Doyle decided he wanted to be physically present at the sentencing hearing. There's no word on when and if the judge will grant the new date. Doyle was arrested last April after allegedly trying to solicit sex from an FBI agent posing online as a teenage girl. He could be facing a minimum of 10 years. Trevor Doyle is a former employee of Bell Media, the same company that owns and operates CTV. An award-winning Nova Scotia musician says a dismal lack of high-speed internet service is threatening his very career. J.P. Cormier lives in a rural part of the Halifax Regional Municipality where he says internet inequity is worsening the financial problems created by the pandemic. CTV's Heidi Petrachik has his story. Acclaimed maritime guitarist J.P. Cormier is known for his fast fingers, but his internet service is anything but. Absolutely dismal. We have a download speed of only 2.6 megs and even more sad, the upload of 1.2. Most basic internet packages in the province start at 100 megabytes per second, but that infrastructure doesn't exist here. When he built his home studio in this rural part of Halifax last year, Cormier had no idea a pandemic would soon devastate his industry. Without live concert venues, he now depends on live streaming and uploading content to make a living. My entire career it depends solely on whether or not I can get a signal to put my performances online. And so far, uh, it's been nearly impossible. And Cormier says he's not alone. He says there are about 60 houses around Cook's Lake here that also have the same problem. Doctors, lawyers, teachers, pilots, all of these people in this one community can't do their jobs online. So if it's a wired service, so a wire into the home, uh, it has to meet um, a 50 megabit um, a download and a 10 upload. Those are the minimum standards for internet set by the CRTC. Develop Nova Scotia is the Crown Corporation tasked with meeting those standards as it works towards connecting as much of the province as possible. Cooksbrook is on the list, but it will take time. We will be turning over every rock on every project looking to see how we can make it go faster. It's about my career ending. It literally. Meanwhile, Cormier says he keeps paying his taxes and paying for what internet service he does have, neither of which is giving him what he needs to pay the bills. Heidi Petrachik, CTV News, Cooksbrook, Nova Scotia. An increase in demand for blood and blood products is just around the corner as some of the hospitals around here begin to provide services that have been on hold for the past couple of months. The need for blood dropped off sharply when the pandemic reached the Maritimes and elective surgeries were put off. But now, officials are counting on donors to maintain that critical supply. CTV's Mike Cameron has the story. 83-year-old Harry Cross is walking a familiar path six decades after making his first blood donation. I am very fortunate to be healthy enough to still be doing it 60 years later. Though these days there are pandemic-driven changes at the blood clinic, changes that start as soon as he goes inside. And asking, you know, if you have been exposed. So they ask about six questions while you're still standing outside the door. <laughs> And, and if you say no to all then, then they invite you in. Inside, there are changes to the layout, too, designed to prevent the potential spread of the virus. Space has been increased between the beds, barriers have been erected, and not all donors are welcome. We are by appointment only, so we are not taking walk-ins because that disrupts our ability to do physical distancing. The demand for blood dropped significantly at the outset of the pandemic when hospitals began curtailing services like non-urgent surgery. New Brunswick is the first to begin rescheduling those procedures, which will impact the blood supply. Our, our inventory is in a good position and we're able to have supply and demand meet. Our next challenge will be as provinces go to different phases of recovery and restart elective surgeries. The most faithful donors say changes at the clinic are reassuring. You have to be careful. 
You don't want COVID-19 in here. Today was donation number 1,000 for Harry Cross, the first New Brunswicker to reach that milestone and one of only five people in Atlantic Canada. Harry Cross's donations and those of many other Maritimers will be increasingly needed in the days to come as hospitals begin to ramp up their services and the demand for blood gets back to normal. Mike Cameron, CTV News, St. John. Thank you, Mike. We're hoping to see the end of the snow tonight. Not just for tonight, but maybe for the season. And meteorologist Kaylin Mitchell here with the midweek weather forecast just ahead. Also in the second half of the broadcast tonight, the Premier of Nova Scotia, Stephen McNeil, on whether the province is any closer to flattening the curve and opening up. But coming next, a top-up for some of Canada's most vulnerable citizens. COVID-19 has been taking its toll on seniors both emotionally and financially. More on a special one-time payment to seniors promised today by the PM. It's one of the stories coming up on CTV News at 6. Today at Walmart, it's far from business as usual. But there's one thing you can be sure of. Our commitment to you. We'll continue to take care of our associates so they can take care of you. We'll keep prices low and work hard to keep shelves stocked. We've increased funding to local charities as more families turn to them for help. It may not be business as usual, but the more we look out for each other, the better we all will be. Are your allergies keeping you from finishing the job? Try Flonase Allergy Relief. Like some pills, Flonase relieves all your worst allergy and sinus symptoms, and just one dose lasts a full 24 hours. Flonase. As alumni, you have no idea what great opportunities lie ahead for you. Like this one, university alumni can now save a bundle on home and auto insurance. Visit sonnet.ca to see if you're eligible. We know these are difficult times and we're with you, Canada. Our family of locally owned OK Tire stores are ready to help when you need us. We know you need to get to the grocery store, the pharmacy, or to your family in need of support. We're here to service the vehicles of people who need to get to work to keep our country running. We need to keep police, ambulance, and delivery vehicles on the road and farmers in the field. Perhaps in no other time has it been more important for all of us to remember, it's going to be OK. People living with serious disability are sometimes wrongfully denied Canada Pension Plan disability benefits. And insurance companies sometimes suddenly and unjustly terminate LTD benefits. Having that monthly payment withdrawn can be very stressful. Perhaps this is happening to you. At McGilvery Law, we help people who have had legitimate claims denied or terminated. And we don't charge fees unless we secure a favorable ruling. Get the experience of McGilvery Law working for you. In May of each year, we celebrate National Nursing Week. Though 2020 is the year of the nurse, there's been little time for celebration. Instead, nurses, like so many other frontline workers, are making sacrifices during this global pandemic, as we do our part by staying home. They put themselves and their families at risk as they care for our most vulnerable population. To honor and support our nurses during National Nurses Week, please stay home to help save lives. This is fun, isn't it? Ellen's Game of Games, tonight only on CTV. This segment brought to you by Chris Brothers Atlantic Canada's Deli. On the markets today, a sell-off in Toronto, a dip of 222 points. Market closed 14,881. Venture up 5.5 today, just over 500 points at the end of the session. The Dow is down sharply, too, by 457. NASDAQ similarly down by close to 190 points today. In the overseas trade, Tokyo down only 24. London was up 55 for the Tuesday session. The dollar to 71.35, that's a dip of two one hundreds. Gold closed today at $1,704.80 US, that's up 680 an ounce, and oil at 2614 is up $1.06 US. Manulife, most actively traded in Toronto with the local interest stock quotes now. The Government of Canada has announced another financial aid measure today, this time for struggling seniors to offset increased costs relating to COVID-19. Details with CTV's Molly Thomas in Ottawa. 
After nearly two months of being directed to self-isolate, the government is rolling out a plan for the country's oldest and most vulnerable Canadians. Now, there's no question that COVID-19 has been taking its toll on seniors both emotionally and financially. In a one-time tax-free payment, seniors that qualify for old age security can now get $300, and those eligible for the guaranteed income supplement can receive an additional $200. 6.7 million seniors are expected to tap into the funds, costing the government $2.5 billion. Due to imposed restrictions, they are paying more in dispensing fees to get the same medication. They are paying a premium for deliveries. All the while, their life savings have taken a beating. The seniors' top-up is different than the CERB, the Student Emergency Benefit or the Employee Wage Subsidy, which renew monthly. Another $20 million will go towards the new Horizon Fund for community groups that reach out to isolated seniors. Lower-income seniors also tend to live alone. Um, they also tend to live in apartments. And they also tend to not be able to afford the internet. The additional support comes as Canada's COVID death toll surpasses 5,000, with the majority of fatalities being seniors. More than 80% of all COVID-19 deaths in Canada are linked to long-term care homes. There are serious underlying challenges facing these facilities and in the coming months the federal government will be there to help the provinces find lasting solutions. For now, Canada's chief public health officer says to stop the spread, testing needs to be a priority in these facilities. The moment you detect a case, and Dr. New just spoke to that, is that is where uh, low threshold testing of everybody, including asymptomatic people, I think, is then becomes extremely important. The government admits that COVID has highlighted the flaws in our long-term care system, but says right now its sole focus is supporting provinces to just keep this virus under control. Molly Thomas, CTV News, Ottawa. Ahead here in health and medical news tonight, why mammograms are still considered the most reliable tool for detecting breast cancer. In the second half hour, Nova Scotia Premier Stephen McNeil with more on the province's cautious approach to reopening after the pandemic. Coming next, a little damp and cool through the overnight hours tonight. Meteorologist Kaylin Mitchell with a better day tomorrow. The promise of sunshine for Thursday is coming next. Crest gum and sensitivity. You may think that tooth sensitivity starts here. Actually, 80% of tooth sensitivity starts here at the gum line. Treat it at the source with Crest gum and sensitivity. It blocks tubules at the gum line for fast relief and wraps your teeth in sensitivity protection. Crest gum and sensitivity. Stop sensitivity where it starts. Crest, healthy, beautiful smiles for life. The day is breaking softly, but I can just see you. Chrysler Injury Lawyers are doing their part to slow the spread of COVID-19. Working remotely helps keep clients, staff, and the community safe. We are open, taking on new clients and here to help. Call 1-800-JUSTICE. Supporting our local food and beverage suppliers is more important than ever. There are so many ways for you to buy local. From online ordering and curbside pickup to takeout and delivery, Nova Scotia's restaurants, farmers, fishers, producers, retailers, and more are all working to help you get your hands on local at home. Visit tasteofnovascotia.com to learn how.
During this COVID-19 crisis, feelings of depression and anxiety can be overwhelming. Being denied long-term disability benefits in your time of need is inexcusable. Presler Injury Lawyers are here to help. Call 1-800-JUSTICE. Closed captioning is brought to you in part by Fidelity Investments. In times like these, strong and steady wins the race. Stay the course. Stay ahead. This segment brought to you by... Chris Brothers Atlantic Canada's Deli. Well, when we don't know quite how to describe the weather, we use the term mixed bag of conditions. There's sort of mixed seasons today, Kaylin. I think you said it was sort of one part winter, one part spring today after one part spring and one part summer yesterday. Yeah. I think yesterday was better. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's for certainly the case for some uh, parts of the region, for sure. I mean, it is a transition season, spring, but generally when we get this far into spring, yeah. we hope to see a little bit more summer than winter. Incidentally, all those people who get all the snow, I, I'm not including that being part of the better. Yeah, by the yeah way, that's right. I know there's a lot of snow down. Yeah, exactly. Well, we'll get to Thursday, and Thursday's got some widespread sunshine across the maritime region and a nice bounce back in temperatures. Wanted to start off with a frosty picture. This is actually from last week. This is from Paul Melanson from Upper Hammonds Plains, Nova Scotia. And I wanted to begin with this because this time of the year I do start to get a lot of questions about uh, last dates of frost in the region. So here on this map, here's a number of weather stations that reported data between 1981 and 2010 and an average date for the last frost reported uh, at all those stations. So I did a little bit of rough contouring on it and this is sort of what I came up with uh, around the maritime region. You can actually see that there are areas, especially large parts of New Brunswick uh, into the interior of the province and up towards the north as well as some areas in Nova Scotia that that actually still have some average last frost dates that do extend on into June. I hear a lot about waiting for that uh, full moon of June before you do your planting. It's generally good advice across much of the Maritimes, though I would caution that this year the June full moon is actually on June 5th, so that's pretty early into the month and it wouldn't be unheard of for us to see a couple rounds of frost after that date. So might need just to be a little bit extra caution around uh, using that full moon this year. Let's take a look at our weather systems map. As we zoom out, we do have a weak low pressure system moving through through the region. In behind it, there is going to be some gradual clearing. That does begin during the overnight hours, by the way, for northern areas of New Brunswick. However, there will be some flurries or a mixture of showers and flurries that hold on to some central southern areas in New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island, and Nova Scotia to start the day tomorrow. You can see that showing up here in through the greens and the blues. Now, moving through the morning, showers, flurries clear out of New Brunswick and Prince Edward Island, but linger for Nova Scotia. They will clear late afternoon and through the first part of the evening. Afterwards, more clearing as we move through the night and a lot of sunshine in the forecast for Thursday. So low temperatures for tonight are going to be a little bit chilly in a number of areas. Lows in New Brunswick between around minus 3 and plus 1, down to near 2 degrees tonight for Prince Edward Island, and lows of 1 to 4 degrees for Nova Scotia. Highs in the forecast for tomorrow are also going to be a little bit cool for this far, this far into May, mostly around the mid to high single digits. But looking at a long-term trend for temperatures, there's some promise for next week. So first of all, we want to get out of these blue colors here. That is sort of the breakdown of some colder continental polar air that we've had over the last several weeks. Uh, as we move later into next week, so here we are going past Monday and in towards uh, Tuesday and Wednesday of next week, notice how these reds and oranges are sort of spreading in from southern parts of the continent and a little bit further towards the east. So uh, that is indicating that there's a good chance that we are actually going to be tapping into some warmer air as we move towards the middle part of the next week. Uh, maybe some high temperatures that'll be more widespread up around the high teens and possibly even into the low 20s. In the meantime, though, let's take a look at our seven-day forecast because we got a little bit of showery weather to get through before then. Uh, for Thursday in New Brunswick, it is going to be mostly sunny, as I mentioned, but on Friday, increasing cloudiness and scattered showers. Now, Saturday and Sunday looking very nice so far. Mix of sun and cloud on both days with high temperatures around the mid to high teens. Does cool on Victoria Day on Monday, the possibility of rain in the forecast. For Nova Scotia in the forecast for Thursday, it's going to be mostly sunny, highs in the low teens, and then on on Friday, low to mid-teens, scattered showers. Saturday should see some clearing. Sunday, a mix of sun and cloud. Highs around the mid to high teens. And then Victoria Day, cooler with uh, rain expected. And then for Prince Edward Island, it is sunshine in the forecast for Thursday. Highs near 10 degrees. Increasing cloudiness on Friday. Showers during the evening and night. Saturday and Sunday, both looking very nice. And then Victoria Day on the rainy side. Steve. All right, thank you, Kalen. And Kalen will return before we conclude here around 7 o'clock. Also ahead, new images of the planet Jupiter reveal some of that planet's 
mysteries to us. And in the health and medical news, a worrisome trend that sees more children visiting ERs with mental health issues. But coming next, the risks and the rewards and why Nova Scotia, unlike some other provinces, is not open for business just yet. Some questions for Premier Stephen McNeil coming up next on CTV News at 6. For those missing their daily Tim's run, we're making it easier by coming to you. Get Tim Hortons delivered with Uber Eats and Skip the Dishes. To live and breathe this air in this place is a privilege that all Canadians have, but it's one we shouldn't take for granted. I would say to any potential contributor that if and you want to have a high degree of confidence that that gift is going to be translated into real action, then your dollars could not be better spent with the Nature Conservancy of Canada. To learn more about how you can help, visit naturestories.ca. Gerard was a mechanic for over 25 years. The job is not easy on the body. I just couldn't do it anymore. He had to go on long-term disability. It came to an abrupt end. We just thought, oh my God, what are we going to do? Then I found out about McGillivray Law. They said, okay, we will take the case and fight for you. He was reinstated on his insurance. Thank God for McGillivray. I can't praise him enough. This year it's all out war. Russia's changing how they fish. First crab to market gets the highest price. I'm scared somebody's gonna die. This is the overboard! Deadliest catch, all new. Tonight at 10 Eastern on Discovery and Discovery Go. At GMC, we're here to help. We're offering 0% financing on some of our most popular 2020 vehicles. Plus, make no payments for 180 days. Ask your dealer for details. With no additional loss of life and only one new case of COVID-19, Nova Scotia has just recorded its most promising test results since the beginning of the pandemic. Most of the province's active cases are at the Northwood Long-Term Care Home in Halifax, where 42 of Nova Scotia's 48 deaths have also occurred. While the province has eased some of its most stringent restrictions, Nova Scotia is still well behind many of the other provinces in detailing a plan to reopen, and the government is under mounting pressure to provide one. Here tonight to discuss the current situation is the Premier of Nova Scotia from his office in Halifax, the Honourable Stephen McNeil. Premier, thank you. Appreciate your time again. No, thanks for having me, Steve. Appreciate it. Premier McNeil, with the number of new cases really decreasing quite sharply over the past couple of weeks, looking at it from your point of view, do you see Nova Scotians flattening the curve or is it already flattened? Well, the evidence certainly uh, points to that. Uh, when you look across our, our time of uh, infection here in the province, we've now started to see the curve uh, going in the right direction, starting to flatten. Uh, and, uh, you know, obviously Northwood has been, uh, been a real, uh, real challenge. Uh, but when you look uh, across the province, the curve is going in the right direction. That being the case, I guess I have to ask, why are you not issuing a timeline with specific dates and guidelines for allowing things to reopen? Because I think you would agree people are itching to get going again. 
Well, we've continued to work with the associations that represent uh, different organizations. For example, the Restaurant Association, we've dealt with cosmetologists. Uh, Dr. Strang is dealing with uh, other organizations that would re represent a large number of people who were impacted by those closures to, to ensure that they know uh, what they need to do to f in order to follow the public health protocols to open. Mm -hmm. uh, there's been many provinces that have been announcing they're opening their economies without any of the details, so their economies haven't opened at the pace they've allowed them to talk about. We're saying let's use this uh, period of time as we're still dealing with COVID to work with our partners in the organization so that the businesses can do some work now so that when we do lift that uh, they can go and and I, and I would say to you Steve uh, this is not a race uh, what's most important for us is public health public safety and at the same time ensuring that we have an economy left but I can tell you loud and clear businesses owners from one of this province to the other have made it very clear to me do not rush this we want to get open, yes. We want to get open. Yep. But we want to, if there's pain now, I don't want to have to, I don't want to have to experience this again in July. Fair enough. But what about the public? I mean, are you not sensing there's growing public momentum on you to, to ease things up? The public has been extremely supportive, Steve. Uh, this is a deadly virus. Uh, we all too well as a province understand the, the velocity and, and, and the way this virus attacks individuals, mm -hmm. particularly those who are most vulnerable in our population and those with, who may not even be in long-term care facilities but have under, other underlying health issues. The public has always been on the side of ensuring that we deal with public health. At the same time, and I, I would say this to you, they want to make sure that we're doing the work right now mm -hmm. uh, with, the, with the economy and those who are driving economic development so that we begin to open up and, and, I, and I would just say this to you, with one of the things that we have seen uh, in other provinces where they've opened up, the businesses weren't ready because mm -hmm. there have been no communications prior to opening. We want to make sure that that's not the case for our province. When we open up, we're ready to go. So you believe other provinces have made a mistake in, in, in opening too early. Which provinces do you think have acted too quickly? No, they've all made the decisions that's based for them. And as I said to you, we were the last province to get the virus. Right. So let's let's not lose sight of that. Well, while, while, while British Columbia was closing down, we were still we were still functioning. Right. So what we're saying is, and we have a higher rate right now in Atlantic Canada. Obviously, the numbers are talking about the infection in our province. It would be it would be prudent for us mm -hmm. uh, to manage this and understand that we're different than our sister provinces next door in Central Canada. How do we best do what's right for our province? What I'm saying to you is. We in public health and the government are taking this time to reach out to our partners, right. whether it's the Restaurant Association, other organizations that represent a large number of people to say, here's what you, your, your members will, be need, will need to do to open up. Go communicate to them, get them ready, and when the economy opens on day one, they'll be able to go. What would be the harm, though, in putting some dates on that, some aspirational dates, if nothing else? Well, because we're working with our partners to ensure uh, this, it's always been my belief uh, that if you can identify that you can meet the pr public health protocols, mm -hmm. why do you need to wait for phase three? If you, if you can ensure that the customer is going to be safe, uh, if you can ensure that, uh, that we're able to go around and you're reducing all the restrictions on virus, why, why put them in phase two, three, or four? Why not when you start opening up the economy, you recognize the organizations that have done their work. Uh, and, and that's what we're working with, is to ensure, to ensure that that can happen. But again, would there be any harm in saying if everything goes according to plan on this date, this will happen? Well, what we've said, uh, I mean, I clearly laid out we want daycares to open on June 8th uh, if, uh, public, uh, if, if the trend continues. Right. Uh, we're telling our partners to get ready uh, and we'll give them an opportunity uh, and that's what we're doing right now. Okay. Both you and Dr. Strang have been quite adamant in your support of a province-wide approach to reopening whenever it is. But again, and I think you've conceded, there hasn't been a new case now in the Western Health Zone in 21 days. That's three weeks. Very few cases in North or East. And the cases in Central are mainly at Northwood, regrettably. So why is it so important that this be a province-wide approach? Why couldn't it and shouldn't it be done? based on where the disease is present? Well, it clearly depends on what you're referring to. So, for example, if you are a cosmetologist in Yarmouth and your clientele is all in Yarmouth, uh, then potentially we can work with that. The Cosmetology Association can open that business okay. uh, differently than, say, someone in downtown Halifax. If it's shopping uh, or retail, 
that's a very different scenario because people will travel to different parts of the province and the last thing we want to do is continue to move uh, the virus around our province. So uh, there have been cases made and people have made a, 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 a discussion, a case around if, it, if the service that I'm providing is, is isolated to a particular part of the province, then right. why can't I open up? And I think that's a logical question. It's okay. one that we've, we've posed to public health and one that we'll consider. So is that a bit of a but no I, I want to be clear, though, when it comes to shop, when I want to be clear, when it comes to shopping, uh, we're not going to open up malls in, say, for example, in Bridgewater, New Minas, and, and Truro, and not in Halifax. Uh, what will end up happening is everyone will end up at those malls and just carry the virus with them. That's, they that sounds it. like that's a, new, a nuanced change in, in your thinking. A bit of a change. No, it's not nuance. It's not nuancing. It's it's the reality. Is people have made the case. I'm, right. I'm, uh, I've listened to them. It's not nuance. Right. I think it's one of the things that we should look at. It's logical and thoughtful, and and I appreciate the Nova Scotians who have have worked with them. That's part of the conversation that I'm talking about. That's happening uh, as we speak uh, with the, with those organizations, so that when we do open up our economy, mm -hmm. people know uh, what they need to do. We've already been warned, Premier, by Dr. Strang and others about the possible or likely second wave of this. Uh, given that, that threat, and it does seem to be real, what would be done differently to protect Northwood and other long-term care homes if there is a second wave in the not-too-distant future? Well, we now know uh, things that we didn't know when this started here was that asymptomatic people uh, uh, can carry the virus and present it. Obviously, uh, masks would be uh, worn at a different time. Uh, those are the kinds of things that we would look at. Um, I also think during this period of time, uh, outside of just in a regular moving about, you know, uh, social distancing, hand washing is going to be critical to ensure that if there is a second wave, that it's that it's flattened. And and and, and to, be, to be honest, you're, you're you're actually laying out the case on why it's critical that we uh, not rush uh, to try to keep up with our sister provinces, but do what. Uh, the epidemiology in our province says we should do when it's time to open and do it at the pace that reflects what's happening in Nova Scotia and not what's happening somewhere else in Canada. Finally, Premier, the lab is capable of doing about three times as many tests as it did yesterday. I know that that's a surge number. But since we do know, as you've just pointed out, that people can be asymptomatic, why are you not testing some people without symptoms just to find out how wide-ranging COVID-19 might be? So that's a great question. We've broadened uh, our testing in the province ahead of everyone. Uh, we're actually testing more per capita than anywhere else in the country. Uh, but only people with and at the same time, we've asked... That but, we, but only we, people no, with symptoms, not, though. No, that's not case. No, that, no, that's not right. No, when we broaden it out, so if you come in... If, if, if someone you're in contact with, someone who doesn't have any symptoms, we still test them. Uh, we've gone through that process. So our contact data is where we actually bring them in. We'll test them. Uh, we've, but uh, what, what your point is, and I think it's, it's an important one, and that's where now we've gone back to public health and to, uh, and to the health department and say, okay, now that we've got to a point where we, we, we're, we're looking at this, this plateauing, mm -hmm. how do we broaden that testing and how do we make sure, and they're looking at other strategies that we can go out and, and you know, to larger groups and, and find out whether or not we can, uh, we can test them. All right. Premier McNeil, once again, we appreciate your time, and I know we'll be chatting again. Thanks. Steve, happy 40th. Congratulations. <laughs> we as a province are grateful for having you in our living rooms uh, almost every night of the week. Uh, I really do want to congratulate you. It's, uh, it's tough enough to be in a business for any length of time, but to do 40 years, and I can tell you, and still do it with a smile on your face, and as positive as you come into our living rooms every night, uh, I can tell you I'm one Nova Scotian who's grateful for what you're doing. Well, Premier, that is very kind, and I appreciate those words very, very much. And our thanks to you for leadership in tough times. Thank you. Premier Stephen McNeil, back in just a moment with more. Eighty percent of bacteria in your mouth aren't even on teeth. Eighty percent? Colgate Total is different. It fights bacteria in your whole mouth, protecting 100% of your mouth's surfaces. Colgate Total, antibacterial protection for a healthier mouth. It's good to know some things haven't changed. We're still catching up with old friends. We're still going on dates. We're still getting into trouble. And we all still deserve a little break.
at alc.ca. Life, like work, is always in progress. You'll never really run out of things to do. It means you'll always have something new to learn. You might even discover something better. Sure, it can be hard, but you gotta be tough, like your Kubota. Because as long as you power through, you'll keep on moving forward. Kubota, for Earth, for life. So you're a tough guy, like you're really rough guy. Just can't get enough guy, just always so puff guy. I'm that bad type, make your mom sad type, make your girlfriend mad type, might seduce your dad type. Duh. Canadians have chosen steel to get the job done. Steel dealer days are back this spring with chainsaws starting at $199.95. Blowers also $199.95 and trimmers at only $169.95. With over 1,000 authorized full-line steel dealers across Canada, it's easy to find expert advice, on-site service, and Canada's number one selling brand of gas-powered equipment. Available at these full-service steel dealers or find your nearest dealer at steel.ca. This man is fighting for his life. You think the board has issues now? How will it look if he gets killed at Belmore a week after the riot? The season finale of For Life, tonight at 10-8 Mountain, only on CTV, then stream anytime. Are you ready? Yeah! Hell yes! Tacoma FD, all new, Thursday at 10.30 on CTV Comedy Channel. In the health and medical news tonight, according to a new study of more than half a million women in Sweden, mammograms can reduce the risk of dying from breast cancer. That is one of the subjects in our Lifeline tonight. We'll see TV's Paul Hollingsworth. The scientists compared breast cancer rates among those who received regular mammograms and those who did not. They found the mammogram group had 41% fewer cancers that were fatal within 10 years. They also had a 25% lower rate of advanced stage breast cancer. Experts say despite recent improvements in breast cancer treatments, nothing can replace early detection. A new study reveals testicular cancers are on the rise, especially among racial and ethnic minorities. Researchers looked at cases of testicular cancer in the U.S. between 2001 and 2016. Although overall rates were highest in white men, minorities had the largest increase during this period. And emergency rooms are seeing a dramatic rise in mental health disorders among children. A new study from Nationwide Children's Hospital looked at national ER data from 2007 to 2016. It showed there was a 60% increase in pediatric visits for mental health treatment. Visits for self-harm rose by more than 300% and substance abuse visits surged by more than 150%. With Health and Medical News, I'm Paul Hollingsworth for The Lifeline. Thank you, Paul. Still to come here, high-resolution images give us a whole new look at Jupiter. You'll want to see that in just a moment. First, though, what you need to know about the weather for midweek Wednesday morning with meteorologist Kaylin Mitchell next. Tonight's Lotto Max jackpot is an estimated $15 million. Time is running out for your chance to win. Get your ticket now at alc.ca or the Atlantic Lottery mobile app. I've always had debt, pretty much since I graduated. You know how it is, juggling credit cards, taking from Peter to pay Paul. I finally had my finances under control, and then I got laid off. Life knocked me down, and I didn't see it coming. So why am I smiling now? Because I asked for help, and I'm back on my feet again. Your debt is a solvable problem. Visit gtdebtsolutions.com for a free consultation. Right now, as our streets empty, so do Canada's food banks. Subway wants to keep them full, and you can help. $2 from every Subway delivery order will be donated to Food Banks Canada. Together, we can feed Canadians in need. Subway, we're here for you.
We're losing him? What do you want to do? Better days are ahead. I know that there'll be better days. We are all one Jeep community, and we can help. We're here for all your essential service needs. We're offering innovative shopping tools at Jeep.ca. And right now, you pay what we pay, with no payments for 120 days. Jeep, helping you drive forward. With employee pricing plus and 0% financing for 84 months. Step into your comfort zone with a heat pump from Sunshine Renewable Energy. You'll enjoy worry-free comfort and energy savings all year long with Fujitsu's 12-year warranty. Their certified Red Seal mechanics and electricians install and service all brands of heating, cooling, and electrical systems. Problems with your current heat pump? Take comfort in knowing they have the solution. To learn more, download your free heat pump guide today. Comfort, savings, and service. Sunshine Renewable Energy. Let the sun shine in. In May of each year, we celebrate National Nursing Week. Though 2020 is the year of the nurse, there's been little time for celebration. Instead, nurses, like so many other frontline workers, are making sacrifices during this global pandemic, as we do our part by staying home. They put themselves and their families at risk as they care for our most vulnerable population. To honor and support our nurses during National Nurses Week, please stay home to help save lives. This segment is brought to you by Melville Heights. Private tours available. Melville Heights, retirement living as you always imagined it. From Nova Scotia webcams, Peggy's Cove. That's live at five minutes before seven o'clock. It is 10 degrees outside. 10 degrees. Peggy's Cove. Meteorologist Kaylin Mitchell now with a few words to wrap it up. Yeah, nice to see the cloud cover breaking up a little bit around Peggy's Cove at the end of the day. As for the forecast for tomorrow, well, it's actually going to be mostly sunny across northern areas of New Brunswick, though a little bit cooler in a northwest wind that'll be 20 gusting to 50 kilometers per hour. So highs will be held in the range of around 5 to 8 degrees. As for central and southern parts of the province, a few degrees milder. Afternoon high temperatures between 9 and 11. There will be some flurries that have to clear first thing in the morning, but in behind that, it will be mostly sunny for the afternoon. Again, northwest winds so a little bit on the blustery side. Charlottetown and Prince Edward Island looking at high temperatures of 5 to 7 degrees for tomorrow. First thing in the morning, cloudy with some showers and flurries to clear, but they will clear moving into the afternoon. For Sydney and Cape Breton, high temperatures will be around 4, 5 degrees. Some scattered showers or flurries throughout the day by the afternoon hour, so uh, any remaining flurries should basically be in the highlands. Eastern areas in the mainland with high temperatures of around 5, 6 degrees. Northern central parts of the province with highs of around 8 or 9. The Annapolis Valley will be seeing some clearing and high temperatures of 7 to 9 degrees. And same thing goes for the South Shore with temperatures up between 6 and and eight. Steve. Thank you, Kaylin. And now to Lisa LaFlamme in the CTV National Newsroom for one of the stories on the National News tonight. Tonight we'll look at the challenge of closing a fundamental gap in the fight against COVID. It just didn't seem right to me that I had to lie to be tested. Turned away from testing a chronic issue plaguing recovery efforts in Canada later on CTV National News. Thank you, Lisa. Something interesting for last tonight, some stunning images from space. Researchers using a technique known as lucky imaging have collected some of the highest resolution images of Jupiter ever obtained from the ground. Now, these images are part of a multi-year observing program in support of NASA's Juno mission, combining multiple observations, revealing lightning strikes and some of the largest storm systems that create them. They're formed in and around large convective cells over deep clouds of water ice and liquid. Mm, sounds like a project for Kalen for the weekend. The latest from space. That is CTV News at 6, but if you've joined us late, this broadcast will be repeated in just a moment over on CTV2. Marie Adset has the next news here at 11.30 tonight. Local news anytime. Andrea Jarrett is leading our team at ctvnewsatlantic.ca. But now for my colleagues on both sides of our cameras, I'm Steve Murphy. Thank you for being here for the last 40 years. We're all back tomorrow afternoon at 5. Have a good evening and be well.
CTV News, the Maritime's number one newscast.